Nakarinig na ba ng lecture sa Sikirito Class? Ako kaya rin ba? Rinig ako. Marami sa nakakakilala kay Ellen White, um, tinuturing ang kanyang mga sulat na comfort and instruction. So, uh, ibig sabihin, marami ang nakaka-appreciate. Ano, ano na sa inyo ang nabasa niyo ng writing sa Ellen White? Ano ang nabasa niyo ng people? Nabasa niyo ang messages niya people? Bizarre ages, great controversy. So, my character personality niya po ang nabasa. So, hopefully, kaya niyo i-download to via app application. So meron blue, meron ding red na po na kulay. Yung red ang mas mas maraming may gusto kasi konti lang yung kanya memory. Yung blue medyo malakas pero meron ocho. So may ocho for sa inyong mga cellphone. At kung gusto niyo naman ng games, meron ding games sa application, ang title niya ay Pit Karen. So pagka giname niyo yun, marami kayong malalaman tungkol kay Ellen White. Okay? At pagka natapos niyo yun, pwede kayong magkaroon ng honor sa uh, sa Pathfinder. Pagka naka 200 points kayo sa game. Okay, mamaya, introduce ko sa inyo. So, sino ba si Ellen White? Sino ang kanyang mga, uh, sino ang kanyang kapatid? Sino ang kanyang mga magulang? So, ito si Ellen White. Okay? Si Ellen White ay pinanganak sa Gorham Main. Okay? So, yun. Pinanganak siya sa Gorham Main noong November 26, 1927 sa isang Methodist parents. So, sino ang parents niya? Methodist. Mamaya siguro yung laptop na lang ang gawin natin, ano? si Kote lang naman sila eh. Pwede na lang natin pakita sa laptop. Okay, isang Methodist parents ang kanya, ang mga parents niya. Hindi siya nagkaroon ng mahabang education hanggang grade, ano lang, grade 3 lang kasi nung bata siya, binato yung kanyang, yung ilong. Pagkatapos nagkasakit siya, hindi na siya makasulat, hindi na rin siya makatayo. So ang nangyari sa kanya, naging parang baldado, baldado siya kasi sa ilong. Pero later, um, nagkaroon siya ng recuperation, lumunik siya, pero hindi pa rin ganun kalakas yung health niya. Kaya nga ang tawag natin kay Ellen White is the weakest of the week. Pinakamahina sa lahat ng mahina. Pero siya ang tinawagan ng Panginoon na magparating ng kanyang pabalita. At age 12, nakarinig siya ng pabalita mula sa isang preacher. At ang pabalita ay tungkol sa kay Esther. At ang sabi si Esther daw ay lumapit, sa, uh, lumapit kay Asuerus. At ang sabi niya, kung mamamatay ako, mamamatay ako. So kung hindi siya lalapit kay Asueros, mamamatay din naman siya, di ba? Kasi papatay lahat ng Udyo. Pero kung lalapit siya kay Asueros, at mag-appeal siya kay Asueros, pwede siya mabuhay at mabubuhay ang lahat ng mga Israelita. So, inisip niya, kung hindi ako lalapit sa Panginoon, mamamatay ako. Pero kung lalapit ako sa Panginoon, paano kung din ako ng Panginoon? So, he, he, she gave it a chance. 
na magkaroon ng conversion sa kanyang puso. Pagkatapos na mangyari sa kanya na luwapit sa Panginoon, kinabukasan, nakita niya na kakaiba na yung flower, kakaiba na yung mga birds, kakaiba na yung nature, parang napakasaya na. So for the first time at 12 years old, nagkaroon siya ng pure conversion. And then for the first time, after few after few years, siguro about mga five years after, ay nakarinig siya ng, ng preaching ni William Miller. Mga four years after, nakarinig siya ng preaching ni William Miller. And for the first time, nung 14 years old, nabaptize siya. Okay? Nabaptize siya dahil sa gawain ng mga Adventists. Okay? Sa panguna ni William Miller. At during this time, uh, naka, nakaranas din siya ng great disappointment. But shortly after, nang maipangaral ni William Miller ang 8.14 ng Daniel, which is unto 2,300 days shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Alam naman natin na nagkaroon ng great disappointment. She was one that was really very disappointed. But during that time, she consecrated herself to God. And then she began to reach out with the fellow young people, fellow women, fellow young people. Nagkaroon siya ng worship uh, on this, uh, like 17 years old child, December, October 22, nagkaroon ng great disappointment. Two months after, November, December, he gathered these young people, ginather niya yung mga fellow young people. He had a, she had a burden na i-encourage sila at the same time may burden siya na pinapagkaroon sila ng conversion. And during this time, nagkaroon siya ng vision, the very first vision out of 2,000 vision. Out of 2,000 vision, nagkaroon siya ng first vision. And what was the vision all about? The vision was all about the Christ the narrow way. So, merong Ay, habang hinahanap niya daw yung Advent people kasi nangawala, nag-scattered na sila dahil sa great disappointment. That was December. Habang hinahanap niya yung scattered uh, scattered people, hindi niya makita. Tapos sabi daw ng angel sa kanya, tumingin ka pa sa itaas. Taasan mo pa. Nung makita niya sa itaas, merong maha, mala, mataas na mataas na bangin <laughs> sa taas. At nandun yung, yung mga Advent movement. Naglalakad sila sa isang very narrow way, narrow path. At ang naglilid sa kanilang light, galing sa likuran, ay tinatawag na loud cry. Tinatawag na loud cry. Or, sorry, the midnight cry. So yung midnight cry was 1844. Yun yung light na naglilid sa kanila para maka makalakad sila. At doon sa unahan, ang naglilid naman sa kanila, yung confidence in Jesus Christ, yung light na meron sila. Pag nawala yung tingin nila kay Jesus Christ, nauhulog sila. So at the end, nandun yung Jerusalem. So yun yung first vision na nakita ni Ellen White ang kauna na ang vision na nakita ni Ellen. At uh, ito yung nagbigay ng encouragement sa maraming nakarinig. Meron dalawang naunang binigyan ng vision, pero hindi nila ito sinabi. Parang nahiya sila at saka uh, parang pakiramdam nila ang worthy sila. Si, si Foy, si, uh, William Foy, and then the another one. Pero ang talagang tumanggap nito ay si Ellen White. Definitely, kinabukasan, he was telling the other people, konti lang sila in, in a little flock, binabanggit niya yung vision sa kanila kung ano yung encouragement na gusto ibigay ng Panginoon. Sabi niya, When this work was first given me, I begged the Lord to lay the burden on someone else. Nung binigay sa akin yung vision, sabi niya, nakiusap ko sa Panginoon na sana ibigay niya na lang sa iba. The work was so large. Tandaan niyo, she was not a minister. Hindi siya minister, isa siyang lay woman. Ano lang siya? Ordinary sister. Pero binigay sa kanya ito. The work was so large and broad and deep and I feared I could not do it. Napakalaki, no? Trabaho ang ibinigay na pakiramdam niya, hindi niya kakayanin. But His Holy Spirit, the Lord has enabled me to perform the work which He had, which gave me to do. So, hindi lang ang Diyos nagbigay ng message, nagbigay din ang Diyos ng kapangyarihan para gawin yung message. So, if God calls you, God enables you. Kaya huwag kayong magpatakot kung tawagan kayo ng Panginoon. Bibigyan din kayo ng sapat ang pangirihan ng Panginoon para gawin ang nais niya. Okay, so she had a very intense ministry. Okay, 70 years ministry since he was, she was called to the prophetic office. So 70 years ang kanyang pinaglingkod. Usually ang mga pastor hanggang 42 years lang, minsan 39 years. Minsan yung iba 30 years lang. See, nagre-retire na. Pero siya, hindi siya nagre-retire. From the time kinawagan siya at 17 years old hanggang namatay siya noong 87 years old, that was 70 years na paglilingkod, tapat na paglilingkod sa Panginoon. And with over 2,000 visions, 2,000 visions, 
Ang vision lang ni Daniel was about like seven. And this, ang vision siguro ni, ni John the Baptist, uh, John the Revelator was like eight or, or few. But she received 2,000 vision. Can you imagine it? And then, ito yung mga writings na naisulat niya. Almost 100,000 pages. Originally, like 100 and... Uh, ngayon, there were like 130 books published. Ni Ellen, uh, sa sa pamamagitan ni Ellen White. At napakarami pang unpublished. Mga manuscripts and letters. Yung mga letters niya. Kaya pagpupunta kayo dun sa amin, I am from Ellen G. White Estate, pagpupunta kayo dun sa amin, makakita niyo mga letter niya from 1844 letters until eight, uh, 1915 na letters, nakakumpile lahat in a, in a very organized way. Tsaka lahat ng manuscript sa lahat ng, sa lahat ng mga sa lahat ng mga lathalain nandun din, originally written by Ellen White. So those were the letters. At siya ang pinaka most translated woman in the world. Most translated woman in the world, especially Steps to Christ and Desire of Ages. So very remarkable woman. And what else? Sino na pangasawa niya? In 1846, nagsasama sa nani ni James White sa lahat ng gawain hanggang sa naramdaman nila na parang makapagdudahan tayo ng mga tao. Sabi nila. For delicadesa, ang ginawa nila, nagpakasal na lang sila. Di ba? Ganda. For delicadesa, nagpakasal sila. And because James White was part of the connection or Christian Connection Church, and Ellen White was part of the Methodist Church, and they were both cast away from the church, you know what they did? Nagpakasal sila sa judge. Sa bahay. At kung pupunta kayo sa Ellen White Estate, papakita namin sa inyo, ganito lang kaliit na marriage certificate nila or marriage contract. Napakaliit lang ng marriage contract. And they began the ministry, okay? And uh, James White was like 25 years old during the time and Ellen White was like 18 or 19 years old during the time. So you can see na yung gawain talaga ang nagpaano, nag-push sa kanila sa, sa pag-asawa at the same time, uh, sa paglilingkod. And one day, mula kay Rachel Oaks, inintroduce ni Rachel Oaks uh, sa, sa mga Adventist yung Sabbath, and then inintroduce din uh, yung, yung mga ng, ng Adventist, ng mga Sabbath keeper kay J Joseph Bates. Si Joseph Bates gumawa siya na pulyeto. Ang pulyeto ay tungkol sa Sabbath. At dumating, nakarating ito kay James White kay Ellen White. Sabi niya, bakit naman nila i-overemphasize ang isang commandment mas kakalimutan na yung iba? Pero nung mabasa nila nung gabi, they were opening their heart to God. They were reading the pamphlet na realized nila from all the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation that the Sabbath was actually established for eternity. So perpetual, the perpetuity of the Sabbath, nung mabasa nila po, hindi pa rin sila makonvince. Although, nandun na sa isip nila lahat ng text. Pero alam niyo na naginip si Ellen White that time. Ang panaginip niya, nakita niya na ang Ten Commandments ay mayroong liwanag sa fourth commandment. Mayroong beam of light sa fourth commandment. Doon niya na-realize na ang ten commandments ang sign ng Diyos, ng kanyang tatak. Doon niya nakita na ang tatak ng Diyos ay ang fourth commandment. Kasi nandito yung, nandito yung assurance ng Panginoon na kanyang pag, pagpatnubay. Just as Ezekiel chapter 20 verse 12 and 20 says that this shall be a sign between me and you, that you may know that I am the Lord thy God that sanctified. Okay? So, ito yung na-realize. And from this, they become Seventh-day Adventists. Not only Adventists, but Seventh-day Adventists. So, dalawang doctrine na na-establish. Una was, the prophetic ministry of Ellen White. May isa pang na-establish actually, was during the cornfield, 1844, sa so cornfield, nakita niya noon, ni Hiram Edson, nakita niya na pumasok ang Panginoon sa ka- Banal, banal and this was the first time they understood the meaning of, of Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. So they established the doctrine of sanctuary. They also established the doctrine of, of prophecy in December. And in 1946, uh, in 1846, they established the doctrine of what? The Sabbath. So nakita niyo yung pautay-utay. And these are the pillars of our beliefs. Ang pillar ng beliefs natin, sanctuary, spirit of prophecy, Sabbath and Adventism, meaning the coming of the Lord. And oftentimes when they travel, they travel thousands and thousands of miles. Walang air condition, walang heater during the summer. Uh, okay? Snow, wind, discouragement, scattered believers. Alam nyo yung paraan nila para marating yung mga believers? 
gagawa sila ng pamphlet. Ang unang pamphlet na ginawa nila was present truth. At pag pinablish nila, yun lang ang paraan para mag-gather ang mga Adventist. Pagbasa nila, pag nalaman na nila yun, magpapadala sila ng pera. Pag nagpadala sila ng pera, magpapublish ulit, bibigay ulit sa nila. Ganun lang ang contact ng mga Adventist nun. They, ang mga Adventist nun, hindi nag-worship in churches. They, nag-worship lang sila sa mga pulo-pulotong lang, ang tawag sa kanilang scattered flock. So pag nag-worship sila sa pulo-pulotong, they, they study together, and then they publish, pamimigay na naman nila. Because originally, the Seventh-day Adventists were about 50,000 in the whole United States. Pero pagkatapos ng great, uh, great disappointment, there were just like few. And I'm talking about like 30 or 40. Actually, originally like almost like 15. Actually, ang pinaka-original was like 8. So, when they begin to publish, pinadalhan uli nila yung mga dating Adventists, yung scattered flock. And then, nagre-respond yun sila, and then nagpapadala ng pera, dumadami uli sila. And, uh, By the end of December, siguro there were like hundreds of them. And then, the more na nagpapadala ng pera, the more sila nag, nag-print ng kanilang mga beliefs. Dumadami sila ng dumadami all throughout the United States of America. But there were unsettled truths within their midst. Yung iba sa kanila, Christian Connection. Yung iba sa kanila, Baptist. Yung iba sa kanila, Methodist. Yung iba sa kanila, are different backgrounds. So what do they do? They humbly come together and open the Bible with open heart. Open heart. So, minsan nag-argue sila with each other hanggang sa hindi sila makarating sa point na magkakaisa sila. So, what do they do? They pray, and then sabi nila, maghiwalay muna tayo, tapos mag-pray ulit tayo, tapos bubuklatin ulit natin ang Biblia, pag-aralan natin without any prejudice. Tapos babalik ulit sila, and then sleepless night para lang i-unite yung kanilang study together. So, this is unique with the Seventh-day Adventist. We are a denomination, we are a conglomeration of different religions, open-mindedly submit to the Scripture. So, Sola Scriptura was their first motto during that time. First motto, Sola Scriptura. Hindi yung beliefs mo, hindi yung tradition mo, hindi yung pinanggalingan mo religion. Kasi galing naman sila sa iba't ibang religion. But for the first time, they, uh, they have fully grounded themselves on the scriptures and in prayer. Tandaan nyo na. Scripture and in prayer. Ito yung tunay na Seventh-day Adventist. And ano mga edad nila? 24 years old, you know, 18 years old. 27 years old. Ang pinakamatanda lang sa kanila was Joseph Bates, about 40 or 50 years old during that time. See, see how the movement worked during the time of Elephant. And um, at ang paraan lang nila para mag-meet during that time, especially in, 9, in 1859, during the Sabbath Conference, ang tawag Sabbath Conference, papatawag nila lahat ng mga nagbabasa ng kanilang mga lathalain, and then they would gather in a Sabbath conference, and they would preach and preach and preach there for the whole two weeks, usually. And sometimes for even a month. Ganon sila. Nakikituloy lang sila sa mga bahay-bahay. Tapos, yung mga bahay-bahay na pinutuloyan nila, pin- inaakay din nila, at nakikinig sa kanila. And then they go back with the message, with fervent message of, the, uh, of the, the, the coming of the Lord at the same time, at the Sabbath, and most probably the new doctrine of sanctuary the new doctrine about the Sabbath, and the new doctrine about the spirit of prophecy. And many more doctrines are established through conferences. Kaya itong mga conference na ganito, sa ganito gumagawa ang Panginoong bumubu, sa banal na Espiritu, sa ganitong paraan. They study the scriptures. They open their minds. And they were eating in, this, in, 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 in small groups. The, the, the conference during that time, uh, ang sabi sa June, June 7, 1859, na writing si Ellen White, we were all much worn out. Pagod na pagod si Ellen White. Wala silang pera. Ano mo, para may stop, ma- ma-publish yung present truth. Naglo-loan mower si, si, si James White ng hectare-hectare. And I'm talking about like, siguro mga, mga 10 to 15 hectares, something like that. Para lang makapag, may pagkain sila at the same time, para may publish lang yung kanilang pulyeto. May publish lang yung kanilang pulyeto. And hirap na hirap sila during that time. Wala na halos silang pagkain. At wala na silang pambili ng flour, pero babayaran pa rin niya yung, ano, yung pang-publish ng present truth. Maliit lang, ganyan lang present truth. Ito lang, may original kami doon sa Ayas. Gan- ganyan lang para may publish nila. Gutom na gutom na sila. And they made all the sacrifices para lang sa gawain ng Panginoon. Ang sabi niya, pakinggan nyo, isa sa mga karakteristik ni Ellen White was self-surrender. Listen very carefully. 
I have arisen at half past five. So 5.30, o'clock in, in the morning. Help Lucinda wash dishes. Kung ba wash pa siya ng dishes. Have written until dark. Nagsulat siya hanggang gabi. Then done necessary sewing. Nagtahik pa siya. Sitting up until near midnight. I have done the washing for the family after my day's writing was done. I have frequently been so weary as to stagger like an intoxicated person. But praise the Lord, I have been sustained. Meron pa rin siyang lakas. Pagod na pagod na sila. Kada conference pupuntahan nila, all throughout the United States of America, lahat ng conference pupuntahan nila, lahat ng ano, magsasalita sila. They would encourage the little flock ng mga nangihina. Mga kabataang nangihina, mga matatandang nangihina. And they would open the scriptures to them, open to them the, the, the light that God has given them, and especially the visions that was given. So let's take a look at the family. Henry, Edson, William, and Herbert. Ito lang yung mga, ito lang yung mga natira sa kanyang mga anak. Namatay yung dalawa dahil sa hirap ng buhay. Okay. Sa hirap ng buhay. Minsan, iiwan ni Miss White. Pagka panganak, iiwan niya. Pabalik siya after two years. No? After after year. Ganong kahirap yung kanilang sitwasyon. And uh, this is uh, Ellen White. This is James White. And, and then uh, the two sons that survived. Henry died of pneumonia in 16, and little Herbert died in three months of uh, erysipelas. That is that that was the the problem. Okay, yun ang naging problema. And because of Ellen White's special call to the ministry, minsan kailangan iwanan niya ang kanyang mga anak. Tapos habang naglilingkod siya sa iba. At the end, med medyo nagsisi siya. Sabi niya sana isinama ko na lang. Kaya lang. Pag isinama niya ng mga mamatay kasi pag may winter tapos na-stuck sila o na-stuck sila sa isang lugar dahil may winter, hindi sila ano. Minsan nandun na lang sila, nalamig na lang sila na sa mamatay na yung mga bata. Ganun during that time. And uh, napansin nyo noon, ang, usually ang kanilang uh, lifespan ay nasa 40 lang, 40 to 45. Ang lifespan ng mga tao noon dahil sa pneumonia, dahil sa tuberculosis, at dahil sa kung ano-ano pa. Ngayon ang pinakamataas actually na na lifespan ng tao actually kasi nawala na yung ano, mortality rate na tumaas na yung mortality rate sabi niya, oh how, how I wish I could just travel around to nice places like you do and leave my children in the in the care of others so laging ganon laging ganon ang situation ni Ellen White see now these are one of the writings of Ellen White, she often write letters to young boys and girls. Lagi siyang sumusulat sa young boys and girls. Kung may Facebook lang sa si Ellen White ngayon, lagi siyang may comment. Lagi siyang may PM kasi lagi siyang concerned sa young people. And she would write her son, she would write another son, she would write, you know, young people all throughout. Basta may namabalita siya susulatan niya. Kaya sabi ko sa inyo, kung, kung, kung nandito lang siya ngayon, na PM niya na kayo. Lalo na kung may mga post kayo na kung ano-ano, sasabihin niya, anak, Mukhang nakita ko yata sa mga post mo na mga napapalayo ka na sa Panginoon. Hinihiling ko na bumalik ka sa Panginoon ngayon. Isik mo siya, tanggapin mo siya ngayon, magsisi ka at gawin mo yung gawain ng isang kabataan. She would do this. At nakita niyo yung mga letters niya, katakot-takot na mga letters. Have you seen the letters to young lovers? These are compilation of letters that talks about love, lalo na yung mga infatuation and all of this. Have you seen messages young people? Much of these are letters to young to, to young people. Na kinumpile lang. That she compiled. At kung pupunta kayo sa Ayas with Ellen White Estate, makikita niyo yung mga original niya talagang sulat. O paano niya sumulat at original na papel. Makahawakan niyo mismo, masisingot niyo pa. It was there. It was kept by Ellen White Estate so that we could have the fresh experience of how they did the sacrifice during that time. And what else? Crowds during that time. They would crowd. She would speak in the United States, in Europe, in Australia. And originally she was shy. She was a shy type of person. Pero she would be speaking into thousands of people. Sometimes she would speak in, in 20,000, estimated 20,000, and everybody would listen to her without a microphone. Do you believe it? 20,000. Pag nagsasalita siya, she was very soft-spoken. But when she speaks in a crowd and she preaches and even pray, everyone would hear her. It, she has a very powerful amplifier 
within herself. Pero pagkausap mo siya, halos very soft. Pero pag nag-preach na siya, she uses the voice culture so powerfully that 20,000 would hear her. What do you think? You think it, it is coincidental? In 1877, Ellen White was a speaker at a mass interdenominational, iba't ibang mga religion ng nandun. It was a rally, an audience of 5,000 listened attentively as she spoke. 90 minutes without amplification, 90 minutes speaking without amplification, and 5,000 heard it right. Heard it right. She developed firm, sustained speaking voice that carried over the crowd. Alam niyo kung anong nagpahina ng boses natin ngayon? Yan. Dahil dyan, hindi natin napapractice yung tama ng boses natin. Kasi lagi tayong dependent dyan. Tapos yung mga tenga rin, yung mga nakikinig, nagiging very dull. Kasi mga rin dyan. But anyway, hindi na tayo kailangan pang mahirapan. And what else? If you go to Ellen White Estate, you will see all the books, all the books of Ellen White. Ellen White's books. Some of them are compiled, some of them are recompiled, and for the benefit of the church. And now, available at your own cell phone. Amen? That encourages the young people. Now, 1,000 volumes combined. Personal and office libraries. Napakarami ngayon. Pakikita niya, napakaraming sumulat kung kung sa kanya. But she did not claim infallibility. She did not claim infallibility. Hindi niya kinlaim na na hindi siya nagkakamali. Okay? Sabi niya, ang Diyos lang mga hindi nagkakamali. Pero she claimed that the messages were from God. Amen? She claimed that the messages was from God. What about her character towards social or towards her neighbor? See, she's a very loving uh, neighbor. And sometimes she would give clothes. Pupunta sa sa ukay-ukay, bibili siya ng mga mamumuray damit na magaganda. Tapos, ipamimigay niya lagi yan. Sa mga, pag, pagka dumating yung mga bata, mag-storytelling siya, lagi siyang may ibibigay ng mga fruits or whatever. At minsan, binigyan siya na napakaraming isda ng kanyang kapitbahay. Napakarami. Ang ginawa niya, pinadala niya somewhere else, pinabigay niya sa mga kapitbahay. And uh, she's a very loving woman. What else would we know about her? Oh, ang gustong-gusto niya lagi maglamer na. <laughs> gustong-gusto niya lagi maglambay, mag, ano, mag Pamasyal. So often times, uh, sila ay magka-carriage, pagkatapos iikot sila at gusto niya makakita ng magagandang mga lugar. Kagaya rin natin. Actually, Ellen White was construed not as a conservative. She was construed as a liberal person during her time. Handaan niya na. She was construed as a liberal person during her time. Very liberal. Isipin mo lang yung righteousness by faith. Diba? Not very legalistic. So, she allows almost young people to do whatever they wanted as long as it would glorify God. Amen? Hindi niya pipigilan ng mga missionaries to do what they wanted as long as it would glorify God. So, she's a... And she also loves health. Especially when she received the vision in 1863 about health. And this is... This was uh, her house in Sunnyside in Coranbong. Uh, Australia and she loved at meron siyang favorite dog later uh, makikita natin kung anong klaseng tao siya she's like an ordinary person right now with an extraordinary calling okay parang kagaya kagaya rin natin you know she loves to talk she loves to to worship usually we worship sila at about 5 o'clock during those time tutulog na mga tao by 6 o'clock lahat but she begins to write at 6 o'clock and sometimes you know even at 12 o'clock, she's still awake to write the messages that God wants us to have. Or else, kung hindi siya nagkuyat, wala tayo ngayong mga kababasa. Amen? So, she's a compassionate neighbor. Ang sabi ng mga neighbor niya, an angel of mercy. Tawag sa kanya, an angel of mercy, bringing groceries or monies to families in need. Lagi siyang may, pag may nakita siyang tao, nakita niya yung pananamit. Lagi siyang may naiisip na, kailangan bilhin ko to, ganito, ganito, bagay ko sa kanya. And, Pagka iimbitahan niya yung tao, pagdating doon, sasabihin niya, oh, meron akong hinanda para sa iyo. And from time to time, she would always do this even to non-Adventists. And all the neighbors, especially non-Adventists, would love her for doing this. So, I think she's really a very lovely person. Kesa sa naisip natin na parang tapang strict to, bawal to, bawal to, bawal to. Minsan naisip natin, pag binabasa natin yung writings ni Ellen White, na puro bawal. No, no, no. 
siguro dahil sa compilation ng kanyang mga writings, ng mga review, lagi siyang may anesthesia. Lagi, bago niya i-review ang tao, mahaba muna ng preparation, bago niya kunin. And she would always lead you to Jesus Christ. Amen? She would always, always lead you to Jesus Christ. And she's a real woman. 5'2". Okay? 5'2". Gray, gray eyes. Okay? Brown hair. She's a gentle, cheerful, thoughtful woman. So, isipin nyo na lang kung anong klase. And, you know, she loves flowers. Basta nakakita siya ng flowers, she would stop. And, you know, appreciate the flower. She loves sailing. Gusto niya rin na maglayag. Gusto niya mag, ano, gusto niya lagi yung ka-travel, travel. Di ba? Ang ganda? She loves to travel. Gusto niya lagi yung vacation. And the, the place she would not always go is to Colorado. She wants to go to Colorado. She loves animals. Okay, especially cubs and chicks. So, gusto niya ng mga cubs and, and chicks. She's really a, a real person. She struggles a lot. Meron siya mga depression. May mga ano siya, depressive state. Lagi siya nadi-depress. And uh, there were also misunderstandings. Minsan susulat siya kay Ellen White, uh, kay James White, humingi ng sorry. Kasi minsan may argument sila. So, kung alam niyo lang yung mga, kung makikita niyo lang yung mga writings ni James White kay Ellen White, you know, she would, you would really know that she's a real person. May kakamali din. Like, uh, you know, there are also, meron din sila mga misunderstanding. And sometimes experience spiritual discouragement. Minsan, spiritual discourage siya. Na minsan, nare-rebuke siya ng Panginoon. Nakikita niya ang Panginoon na nakasimangot kasi ayaw ng Panginoon na nare-discourage siya. And at various times, there were also painful inflammatory. Meron mga namamaga sa kanya. Minsan, nakakakan, uh, may meron siyang cancer. Minsan, meron siyang mga, uh, mga chest pain. Ryuma, meron siyang ryuma. Headaches, napakarami niya. In fact, napakarami niya sakit. Minsan tatayo siya sa pulpito parang parang babagsak na siya. Pero maya maya babalik yung lakas niya. Kasi bibigyan siya ng lakas ng Panginoon. At nung 60, uh, 60 na yung kanya, uh, at, at 860 na matay yung kanyang husband. So there's 17 years to go na walang husband. Okay? 17 years to go na walang husband. She was 54. Ano, the husband was 60. She was 54 during that time. But for a time, parang hindi niya na kaya. Parang mamamatay na rin siya na wala si James White. Kaya malungkot na malungkot siya kasi mahaba pa sana yung paglilingkod ni James White pero dahil sa hindi naging very careful sa, sa help, doon siya natuto na kailangan talaga na mamanggagawa ng Panginoon ay malusog. Okay, what else? She said in uh, manuscript uh, 14 in 1903, at times, I do feel depressed. So kung nadidepress kayo, ganun din siya. I do feel depressed. I struggle against the feeling. I know that God wants His joy to be in us and that our joy may be full. He has a heaven full of blessings and those blessings He will give to us if we will take them. Minsan gusto natin magdwell na lang sa discouragement. Gusto na natin maging malungkot. Pero ang sabi ni Mrs. White, merong heaven na hinihanda sa atin at gusto niya maging masaya tayo at gusto niya tanggapin natin yun. Pero bakit magdidwell pa rin tayo sa kalungkutan? So, she's a normal person, just like us. Minsan, may mga panahon na Sabado, parang ayaw, na, ayaw natin pumunta sa church. Nadi-discourage tayo, pero napipilitan tayo kasi Adventist tayo. But at the end, pag natin punta tayo sa church, nai-encourage tayo, lumalakas ulit tayo, di ba? So, just the same. Just the same. Nananagumpay lang, di ba? Pareho lang ang tagaya natin. Even when exceedingly brain-weary, your mother seems to find great comfort in the promises of the Word. Saan daw siya na nga kakita ng comfort? Kahit pagod na pagod na siya, pagka bumuklat siya ng Biblia, she, find, he, she finds what? Comfort. From where? From the promises of the Word of God. So, ang Word of God talaga ang kanya, comforter. And what else? Oh, she loves homemaking. She sews, she washes dishes, and she also washes clothes. Talagang normal, hindi yung kakay propeta na lang, sulat na lang, sulat yung video. Talagang mother, motherly na motherly, si Ellen White. And in 1855, the Whites chose their own home. She, she practices the motherhood, the single motherhood. Okay? Single motherhood from 54 years old to 87 years old. Single motherhood. 
talagang hirap din ang buhay, pero makikilala natin na talagang putuong tao siya. At ito yung isa sa mga bahay nilang favorite niya, Helms Haven. Helms Haven, sa California. At dito, nag-worship sila dito sa sala na to, at about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, they would really love to, to open the scriptures, they would sing. And especially on Sabbath, like Friday afternoon, talagang aawit na sila by Friday afternoon. Before the setting of the sun, they worship, they thank God. Like thanksgiving sila. And then they would sing good hymns and pray at family worship. Dito yan. And then anong favorite team ni Ellen White? Ang lagi niyang pinag-uusapan, lagi niyang preaching, the love of God. It's the love of God. Pag binasa niya step to Christ, love. Pag binasa niya desire of ages, love. Pag binasa niya Christ of the flesh, it's love. It's always love. In fact, what is the first chapter of Steps to Christ? God's love for man. Okay? So this is the favorite tip. Favorite tip ni Ellen White. God's love for man. What else? Ang sabi niya sa Steps to Christ, page 15. The matchless love of God for a world that did not love Him. The thought has a subduing power upon the soul and brings the mind into captivity to the will of God. Ang nagka-captivate daw sa atin sa Diyos ay yung pag-ibig niya. Amen? Pag na-realize natin yung pagmamahal ni Kristo, yun yung pag-ibig niya. You know the, 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 the topics I preach, I just got it from Christ Object Lesson. And ni-relate ko lang siya in a more contemporary way sa inyo. Add a little picture and tell the story, but all, almost all the reflection comes from Ellen White and how she reflects the, the love that comes from God. And did you feel the love that comes from God through that? God is really love. And it's not just by words that God is love, it is by heart that she loves God. What about the great controversy? Isa, isa sa gusto yung gusto niyang team. Laging ang pinag-uusapan niya was great controversy. Na laging nila banal, Satan and his angels, Christ and his angels, laging nila banal, even in our minds. Even in our thoughts, even in our family, in our church, and even in the world, there's a conflict between Christ and Satan. So she wrote the great controversy, the paradox between light and dark, uh, light and darkness. This is a favorite theme. And in fact, the Seventh Day Adventist Church has has a theme, uh, has the uh, the theme in our minds of the great controversy. The whole doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist Church is themed after the Great Controversy. So lahat ng mga beliefs natin are themed under Great Controversy. And no person in the world has ever done this. No person in the world has ever done this. Only Ellen White. And what else? She said, Even when it was decided that He could no longer remain in heaven, infinite wisdom, did not destroy Satan, since the service of love can alone be accepted, acceptable, acceptable to God. The allegiance of His creatures must rest upon the conviction of His justice and benevolence. Kung may maglilingkod man sa Dios, dapat maglingkod ka na meron kang sense of justice and benevolence. So kaya ako maglilingkod sa Dios kasi ang Dios ay matwid at ang Dios ay mahabagin at mapagbigay. Hindi ka maglilingkod kasi napipilitan ka lang. Okay? This was the theme of Ellen White. And the inhabitants of heaven and of other worlds being unprepared to comprehend the nature and consequences of sin could not then have seen the justice and mercy of God and the destruction of Satan. Kung papatayin niya si Satan, hindi makikita ng buong universe yung tunay na ugali ng Diyos na pagmamahal. So the more na magpapakasama si Satan, the more na magbibigay ng chance ang Diyos na maligtas si Satan o maligtas ang lahat o ma-realize yung tunay na karakter ng Diyos, the more na magiging prepared ang buong, ang buong universe na maglingkod sa Diyos ng tapat at walang halong takot. So this was her theme. He had been immediately blotted from the existence. They would have served God from fear rather than from love. So maglilingkod sana ang tao na may takot kesa sa na may pag-ibig. So this was her theme. And what else? Jesus Christ and His salvation. Gustong gusto niya tema ito. Gusto niya tema ito. And she would always tell that every day we must contemplate on the last scene of before Christ's crucifixion. Dapat lagi daw natin tignan yung scene. Because there, He revealed His glory to the ultimate. Justice, His mercy. 
lagi yung sinasabi ni Miss White, justice, kiss mercy on the cross. Doon sa cross, ipinakita niya na hindi pwedeng hindi mamatay ang tao dahil sa kanyang kasalanan. Sa cross, pinakita niya rin na pwede siya na lang ang mamatay instead na tayo. Amen? So this was a very beautiful theme. She said, The sacrifices of Christ as an atonement for sin is the great truth around which all other truths cluster. So kung meron ng truth sa Bible na iba-iba, ang talagang bumubuo ng truth na ito ay yung sacrifice ni Christ sa cross. Kung meron nang kayong alam, Sabbath, I mean food, clothing, uh, stewardship, and whatever, these are all, the, embod uh, the embodiment of this is the, the love of Jesus Christ crucified on the cross. She said, in order to be rightly understood and appreciated, every truth in the Word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, must be studied in the light that streams from the cross to Calvary. Amen? Heaven from the cross of Calvary. So, kung gusto niyo maging tunay na Adventist, pag-aralan niyo lahat ng doktrin natin sa light ng Calvary on the cross. Amen? So, kahit sa Master Guide, pinakikita sa atin yung Christ-centeredness ng lahat ng doktrin. Without Christ-centeredness, all our doctrines are in vain. Wala rin magagawa ito sa atin. And I present before you the great grand monument of mercy and regeneration, salvation and redemption, the Son of God uplifted on the cross. So Jesus Christ lifted on the cross was the highest knowledge in the world. Ano raw ang pinakamataas na knowledge sa mundo? Jesus Christ lifted on the cross, the science of redemption. Yun ang pinakamataas na science na maabot natin dito sa earth. Hindi yung pagiging engineer, hindi yung pagiging teacher, hindi yung pagiging pastor kundi yung pagiging ano, pagiging tunay na submitted na Christian. Now what else? Gusto rin niya to, The Three Angels Message in the Second Advent. Revelation chapter 14 was the favorite theme of Ellen White. She said that righteousness by faith is the three angels' message in verity. Kaya ang lagi niya iniisip yung Fear God, give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment has come. And then, I saw another the angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to be preached to all nations, kindred, common, and people. This are his favorite thing. Are her favorite thing. And what else? Pakinggan nyo. This is also one of her favorite things. Help. In 1863, June 5, if I'm not mistaken, she received a vision in Otwego. And the Lord was telling him that the church must, you know, prepare themselves for the coming of the Lord by cleansing their temple from any infirmities of soul, body, and spirit. And how do they do that? They should abstain from what? From eating meat. They should abstain from anything that is harmful to their bodies. They should use liberal source of uh, liberal uh, amount of water. They should be eating nuts, fruits, vegetables, and legumes. And what else? They should be resting especially on Sabbath, and then the, the sixth, the, the, sixth the, the, the eighth secrets of health, nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air and rest, trust in God. These are the themes of health that she wanted to, uh, you know, to, 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 that we must, must make use. Kailangan gamitin talaga natin to para ma-prepare tayo. Hindi yung mga weakling tayo, we become a dying sacrifice rather than a living sacrifice for Christ. Amen? Gusto niya itong theme na ito. Ito yung theme ni Ellen White. And then, all are required to do what they can to preserve healthy bodies and sound mind. If they will gratify the gross appetite and by so doing, blunt their sensibilities. Pagka gross yung appetite natin, it would blunt our sensibilities. Ano nangyari? Nagiging binumb yung ating mga isip. Lumulutang yung ating mga utak at hindi na natin makita yung katotohanan. Kahit na na-preach na, hindi pa rin natin ma-process ma ng maigi. Because our mind are blunt. These are what? Benumbed by the appetites that we have. And by so doing, blunt their sensibilities and becloud their perceptive faculty so that they cannot appreciate the exalted character of God or delight to the study of His Word. Kaya tinatamad magbasa ng salita ng Diyos. Tapos manood ng ano, entertainment, babasa ng salita ng Diyos. Doesn't make sense. Parang ka naka-drugs. Napakakainin ka ng pagkain. Nakakita na kayo ng drugs, makakainin ng pagkain. Kakain ba yun? Busog yun, di ba? Busog yung isip niya. Ganon din yun. Pagka so much tayo sa entertainment, masyado tayo sa ganito. We do not thirst 
the Word of God. Amen? Masyado tayong binusog na at ng, ng mundo sa isang bagay na hindi naman talaga to, totoong pagkain. Okay? Ang totoong pagkain is the Word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I have treasured thy words more than my daily bread. Amen? We should treasure the Word of God more than His daily bread. And they may be assured that God will not accept their unworthy offering. Pagka daw hindi natin ninyangatan ang ating katawan, we may be assured that God will not accept our unworthy offering. Pwede ba yan? Galing kay Ellen White, sabi niya, our unworthy offering uh, any sooner than of Cain. Tatanggapin niya ang kagaya rin ng pagtanggap kay Cain. God requires them to cleanse themselves from all filthiness of flesh, spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God after man has done all this power to ensure health. Pag nagawa mo na lahat ng mga kaya mo para magkaroon ng kalusugan, pakinggan niya, by the denying of appetite and gross passion, that he may possess a healthy mind and a sanctified imagination, that he may render to God an offering in righteousness, then he is saved alone by the miracles of God's mercy as was the ark upon the stormy billows. So, pag ginawa na natin ang lahat, assured tayo na niligtas tayo ng Panginoon. Bakit? Kasi yung mercy ng Panginoon ang dulot sa atin para ingatan ang ating mga sarili. Kung hindi natin ingatan ang ating mga sarili, kung tayo mismo hindi makapag-ingat na ating sarili, okay? Nasa ng evidence ng salvation. Where is the evidence of salvation? So Noah had done all that God required of him in making the ark secure. Sinecure niya yung ark. Pero sa tingin nyo, kakayanin ba yung ark talaga yung pillows, yung waves? Kakayanin ba talaga? I don't think so. Pero pag ginawa mo na lahat para masecure mo yung ark, matakpan mo lahat ng butas, gagawin naman ng Panginoon para hindi ka ma hindi ka mamatay. Ganito yun. Pag iningatan mo ang katawan mo, the best of your ability, the rest is miracle. Amen? The rest ay miracle. Isusustain ka ng Panginoon, isusustain ka. Pero kung tutuusin, kahit pagkain mo, kahit lahat yan, cannot suffice ka. Amen? Kahit mag-exercise ka pa lahat yan, kulang kung wala ang Panginoon. Amen? So that was the, the story about Ellen White's uh, promulgation of health. Now, because of the writings of Ellen White, we have now 20 large food industries in the world. 173 big hospitals and sanitarium. 132 nursing homes. 216 clinics and dispensaries. 36 orphanages. Nakakita na kayo ng isang orphanage dito sa Pilipinas? ICC. International ICC. International Institute of Child Care. Sa Akla, sa likod ng Akla. Nakita mo naman, Jacob? Sa likod ng Akla, may ICC. So, that's one of the result. At ito yung mga dahil sa payo ni Miss White. What about cornflakes? Nakita na kayong cornflakes? Oh, ito yung na-discover ni Nino. Ng magkapatid na Kellogg. Isang araw, kinano nila yung, ano, yung corn. Uh, parang binlender nila. Pagkatapos, napabayaan nila, natuyo. Nung natuyo, sa, parang natuyo yata sa araw, tapos niros nila. Nung kinain nila, nandun pa rin yung content ng carbohydrates. Lahat-lahat nandun pa rin. And it was a big explosion. It changed the what? The lifestyle of the American diet, the American breakfast. Si Kelo. And uh, she was also telling about like sugar. Uh, the, the free use of sugar is bad. And it is poison to our, to our body. So we should not freely use sugar. We should not freely use sugar, although it's good. But any amount that exceeds what is required is not good for our body. So abstinence for that, it, that which is not good, and temperance for that which is good. Okay, kailangan ng temperance. And let me finish this. She said, I use some salt and always have because from the light given me by God, this article, in place of being deleterious, is actually essential for blood. The whys 
and wherefore of this I know not, but I give you the instruction at is, as it is given. Nagasin siya? Of course. Nagasin siya. It's good for our blood. And uh, the rest, no smoking, exercise, healthy weight, vegetarian diet, nuts, and all can add uh, 10 additional years. This is a, uh, a study that was done. And what else? Vegetarian lives more than non-vegetarian. And education. She was also talking about education. It's like planting seeds. Para nagtatanim ng seed. At pagka hindi may educate ang mga tao, parang pinabayaan mo yung lupa na tumubo yung mga dawag. Ganun ang nangyayari kapag hindi na-educate ang tao. So she was very much concerned of education. And what else? And uh, what about her writings? Of course, 5,000 articles, 1,000, 100,000 handwritten uh, manuscripts. And the rest goes on. Ang una was the conflict of ages. The second one was the the individual books. And then the third one was the testimonies. And there are also devotionals. Ngayon may bagong devotion na ngayon sa Jerk the Buong Mundo. Ang pangalan ay ano? Uh, parang in coming. Pero wala sa Pilipinas. Iba yung devotional natin sa Pilipinas. I don't know what happened. So, you want to know about Ellen White, go to the internet, type nyo lang Ellen White. Kaya lang, ang magpa-pop up doon yung mga kontra kay Ellen White. Now you have to put Ellen White Estate para makita nyo lahat ng mga bago. And there are also applications for Android. Sino sa inyo may Ellen White sa Android? Good. Okay? There are two Ellen Whites in the Android, the, the blue form and then the red form. Which do you have? The red. The red is easier. Blue takes a lot of memory. Diba? But blue is very nice because it has audio in it. It's audio in audio phone. And then iPhone and iPad. And uh, I was introducing, uh, pakita ko sa inyo itong game na ang pangalan ay. Um, and then let, let us test you. Let's test tayo bago tayo matapos. Okay, please uh, answer the question. Nasa na yung Okay. Let us see. Please answer the question, huh? Oh, that's Ellen White, huh? What injury did Ellen White suffer at age nine? I'm sorry. What happened? That's it. What injury did Ellen White suffer at age 9? What? B. B. Let's see. Good. What was the last thing Ellen White said? Anong huli niyang sinabi nung mamatay siya? Okay. Try. A, B, C, or D? Ha? C, tingnan natin, ha? Hindi. D, check natin. Hindi. Ha? B. Yes. Yan, ha? I know in whom I have believed. I know in whom I have believed. Okay, what else? Continue. What is not the test of a true prophet? Performs miracles, believes in Jesus, predictions are fulfilled, agrees with everything written in the Bible. Okay, hindi ko pa kasi na-discuss ko. But anyway, at least naipakita ko sa inyo yung games. Okay? And you can have that in your own cell phone. Okay? If you get 200 points, you can get the honor. So God bless you. Is there any question? Any question? Ano magpapalitan mo? Any question? Any reflection? Ellen G. White Reluctance? What is that? So, medyo slide po. Okay. Paano po mo sasabi ng sinasi? 
Saan makita? Dito? What part? Relaktan to what? Kita tak? Okay. When this work was first given me, I begged the Lord to lay the burden on someone else. The work was so large and broad and deep I feared. The Holy Spirit, the Lord, enabled me. Ah, so the title was reluctance. Meaning that he was not eager to take the challenge of being a prophet. She was humbled enough. She thinks that she is not worthy to become a prophet. And she could not make it. So when the, the Lord still in, insisted, she said, but okay, I will accept it. But make me humble. Make me humble. Give me humility. The Lord said, okay, whenever you think, whenever there's a direction for you to boast or to have pride, I will give you information. I will give you sickness. Sabi na pa, pagka pakiramdam, pa, parang paano ka na, yung pa-exalt ka na, bibigyan kita ng sakit. Yun ang pangako ng Panginoon. So every time na medyo may exalt na siya, bibigyan siya ng sakit. So pag nagkakasakit siya, lalo siyang nag-humble, kaya nasustain siya hanggang sa matapos yung kanyang ministry. So what do we understand about that? Kaya minsan ang mga sakit, ayan o, is also God's way of redeeming and what? Ibig sabihin na bibigyan kita, ipapahintulot kita. Kasi kung wala ang Panginoon, talaga magkakasakit naman talaga ang tao, di ba? Pero ang nagsusustain na sa atin ang Panginoon. So minsan, i-withdraw ng Panginoon ng konti para manghina siya. Pag manghina siya, mag-ahambol siya. So that's a way para makip siya ng Panginoon sa kanyang gawa. So Yes. Always. Always. Laging. That's like Moses. Moses was the most reluctant of all. She, he rejected again and again God's word. But the Lord was angry. I said, why are you doing that? And then the word was, you know, fierce with anger because she, he doesn't accept the polling. But in any way, he accepted the polling. She accepted the polling. Compared to the two uh, previous two guys, one black, one white, that did not really accept the challenge. Their life was uh, miserable. Na wala sila sa tamo ng palatayan dahil sa hindi nila tinanggap yung prophetic office. Any more question? Meron pa kayong tanong? Food. Yes. Sa kapag ipiningatan yung sarili. Halimbawa, Pastor, naghihirap, naghihirap na po. Pinag-usapan kasi namin. Medyo, medyo na, na ano po dun sa discussion ng history. Kasi, dun, nung panahon, nung, nung panahon, nung, nung panahon ni, ng mga Americans, ang lifespan, naging, umabot po sa 21, umabot po sa 21 years old yung lifespan. Then, paano po natin, halimbawa, crisis na po, ano, yung yung pagkain nila nung nung time na yon is yung yung baboy tapos kaya naging life span 21 I think 21 to 22 kasi dahil doon sa kinakain nila ngayon sabi ni Ellen White kailangan natin ng uh, gumawa ng paraan so nag na introduce yung pagiging vegetarian tapos how about pastor wala nang ibang kakainin halimbawa sa survival Nandiyan yung kaka- may nakita kang kakainin kasi yun sinasabi na hindi pwede yung kainin. Anong gagawin ko? No, the Lord wants us to preserve our health in the best way possible. In the best way possible. So meaning, we, we should do our best to preserve our health in the best way possible. And the Lord also provides. The Lord also provides. 
So meaning we have to trust that the Lord will provide. But of course, it's another case if it's swine. Ibang case on swine. Although in 1863, all our ministers are receiving swine as their salary before 1863. But just after 1863, when they started to have this vision and it was published, a little later, like a month after the German conference was organized, they received the vision of the Oswego the vision, the health vision. Meaning that the Lord waited until they will be organized before He gives His message on health. Because they need to be united when they would believe um, unitedly about the health reform message. Kasi kung hindi sila united, hindi pa sila general conference, hindi pa sila nag-meet, tapos ito lang makareceive ng vision, magkukontrahan yan sila. So at least, nung nabuo na siya, saka binigay yung, yung vision in 1863. And then from then, they accepted it as a whole. So I would say that the, the Lord waits until His people would fully understand the health message. So, Pastor, uh, at this time, at this moment, sa Pilipinas crisis, ano po? Halimbawa, dito sa Pilipinas, ang, ang may kakayanan lang maggumawa ng, ng halimbawa, gusto nyo mag-vegetarian. Ah, halimbawa, halimbawa po sa akin, ah, gusto ko mag-vegetarian, pero uh, wala po akong kakayahan bumili ng, ng mga food para sa pagiging vegetarian. So, halimbawa, tayo as Adventists, how can we share this message? Or paano natin masasabi sa kanila? Halimbawa, yung may hirap din po na katulad din po natin na namuhay sa ganito, paano natin po maishishare ito sa kanila na wala lang silang kakayahan? First, I would like to tell you that the visions of 1888 was not about vegetarianism. The vision was about health reform. So how do you health reform? From one level to another, from one level to another, from one level to another. It's not vegetarianism. It's not vegetarianism. Yung health reform, Pastor, alimbawa, sa panang natin ngayon, lalabas tayo sa kanila. So what is health reform? From swine to non-swine. That is health reform. Do you get the point? So From swine, swine, swine to not swine. Swine, not swine. Of course. But that's already health reform. Now, if you are removed from non-swine, you now go to the next level. From non-swine to a higher level. So health reform must be the, the key message, not vegetarianism. You cannot even, you cannot even find one ver one quotation from Ellen White saying vegetarianism. She always says health reform. Health reform has something to do with dress. It has something to do with exercise. It has something to do with water, with sunshine, and the rest are health reform. We should not concentrate only on what to abstain. We should all concentrate also on what to do or what to drink or what to eat rather than what not to eat. So it's not about what not to eat. It's about what to do in order to, to, to stay healthy. So if it's the, the most healthy you know, food available in order not to die at the same time, not to get sick, so use the most suitable food available in town or in, in whatever place. But it, we should not insist of vegetarianism. We should insist of health reformation, not vegetarianism. You cannot find it. You read again from Ellen White, she does not exist on vegetarianism. She insists on health reformation, finding the best possible uh, substance in order for you to survive. The best possible substance to survive and to stay healthy. Okay? Napansin nyo, I'm drawing you away from the idea that the health, the, the health message was about vegetarianism. It's not even close to it. Although well, vegetarianism is one of the best ways, but it should not be the emphasis of the health message. Hindi dapat emphasis ng health message ang vegetarianism. Pero as far as you can move closer to the idea, that is already a health reformation. That is the message. Kung paano ka makakamove, yun ang message. Okay? That should be the emphasis rather than vegetarianism.
Okay? You can't even find one word, vegetarianism in the spirit of prophecy. But you will always say health reform. And it encompasses all, all the principles of health reformation. After this, maybe I will have another talk about that. And let's see how we can find it. Okay? So, cut na.